so far we were understanding about different uh, execution processes and how to pass command line arguments and etc right now let's deep dive into a bit more about understanding the node.js timers that is set timeout set interval set immediate and process.next take uh, how they are executed of the how they are treated because all of these are asynchronous functions inbuilt asynchronous function which is given to us by node.js module right so let's try to differentiate them and also let's try to look into their use cases right uh, when you want to use what and how to do this right so first the set timeout set timeout is a, is something which calls a function after minimum duration of time mentioned as second argument okay but what set timeout ideally does is set timeout okay set timeout and function right function it can take two arguments is what we have seen so far but technically it can takes any number of arguments a comma b comma c now where are these arguments going to be passed these arguments are later going to be passed to this function comma b comma c so whatever arguments which you are uh, registering while you are creating the set timeout right so let's say uh, i want to call a function uh, call with the delay right now uh, this is the function set timeout function and there are some values in it which you want to pass to this function while we are executing the code after, because this function is going to be executed after certain number of a uh, certain delay right so whatever arguments you pass over here uh, those will be passed to this callback function at the time when this function is pulled on to the event loop so that is one of the thing which we haven't seen before and also the set timeout can be assigned to a variable outside to a variable and later when you want to clear this timeout let's say you scheduled this function okay so let me let me do this the 2000 milliseconds okay or let's say 10000 milliseconds right now what i am trying to do is i am trying to uh, run a loop for i is equal to 0 i less than uh, i less than 1000 okay and i plus plus right so i'm just giving some drop random use case okay uh, where i equal to 0 and now uh, i plus plus right i plus plus now i schedule a timer i schedule a timer to add, uh, multiply these two values, okay, console.log a star b. Maybe I am scheduling uh, something to send an email or anything uh, only in a certain number or certain delay, right? Let's say I booked a doctor appointment, then uh, if the doctor is not uh, available to him or if the doctor is not joining the call or whatever, not joining the uh, anything, you want to remind him, right? But you want to remind him only uh, when he doesn't join or if he joins also you don't want to remind him uh, if he doesn't join after 30 minutes also you don't want to remind because you want to cancel it in such cases what you can do is so the use case which here i am trying to convey is that uh, you want to clear a timeout because you don't want to execute that piece of code because uh, when the doctor joins you you when the appointment is bit you created a timeout to send him a reminder but uh you don't want to send him if he joins the call so you want to clear that timeout right so you can use this reference later right if you you can use this reference later and you can clear that timeout with this way so once certain condition is achieved if i is equal to equal to 999 then i can clear my timeout so what this does is, if I is reaching to the 9,000, 9, 
triple line then it will clear my timeout some line of logic so now this function won't be executed so if i run this code now so see that function is not executed right otherwise if i do this some condition which is never going to achieve then oh i didn't run this code at all all with delay right and yes now if i run this code see this console.log has been printed but when i run this code it's not because i have cleared the timeout and i have cleared event loop and everything so this is one thing which you can do so when you want to schedule a timeout but you that timeout can be removed or you want to remove that timeout after certain amount of time then also this is achievable the same is the case with set interval set interval also takes the same or number of arguments and it is exactly the same way but here this function is automatically invoked every uh, every time after 1000 milliseconds uh, instead whereas in timeout it only invokes once right so the set interval also returns a value which can be later cleared which can be later cleared uh, after certain time if a condition is achieved right so if i run this code oh time out yeah set interval so it's saying callback must be a function received time out oh no it is clear interval right clear interval so now since this condition is achieved way before 1 millisecond uh, the interval has been cleared but if i am just putting some random condition which is never going to achieve then set interval is going to run right so that's how you clear or you set the intervals and also you pass some extra values to the function which is going to be invoked at a later future point by passing the arguments in this fashion so both the set interval and set, set timeout are going to return some values to you which you can later use to clear the timeout or clear the intervals now you have other two uh, most confusing or most advanced uh, functions that is process dot next tick versus set immediate so first thing let's discuss about set immediate right so set immediate immediate is also same like set in set timeout and if you run this code if you run this code set immediate and i'll remove this code for certain amount of time i don't want this now now set timeout zero right so i am calling the set timeout function uh, with zero seconds gap i can call right it, it takes a uh, second argument as any number so i am calling it with zero seconds gap it means it will wait for zero seconds right what does that technically mean when i am giving zero as second argument what does that technically mean it means that you execute whatever so what how set timeout works is it executes whatever uh, are present inside the main queue or main uh, uh, main event queue once that is cleared and if there are no functions available in that event queue then whatever timers which we have scheduled back then it checks it checks if the timer is over or not if the timer is over then it picks out so hence set timeout always guarantees that I am not going to call your number exactly at 0 second. I am going to wait for at least 0 seconds before calling that function. So now set in, set timeout. So see console.log inside main. Right now what is the order of execution? So set immediate is also going to call immediately. It means technically 0 itself. Right. But when I run this code see main set timeout set immediate main now set immediate has come first now set timeout now set immediate now set timeout so it is totally uh, 
unreasonable to say that set immediate is going to be called first or set timeout is going to be called first. So what is the purpose of having set timeout or set immediate, right? So first thing, I mean, I can use literally, I can use set timeout of zero and I can use set immediate in contrast. I mean, they, they are one and the same. Why do, why to define two functions? But if you observe, the main thing is always called first. It means the main thread execution is always given priority and this caller uh, timers or asynchronous functions are put in the callback queue only once the main thread is going to be free, then only these two functions are called. But what is the difference between set timeout and set immediate? And one, no, one more uh, confusing property that is process dot next tick. What is the tick, right? We'll see that. So process dot next tick is also going to do the same thing. Uh, next tick. Right. So next tick is called first. Next tick is called first. So if you see here, set timeout and set immediate are changing or uh, occurring randomly, but ne main next tick and are uh, remaining the same. Right. So main after main, definitely next tick is going to call, even though I have defined it at the last. Right. So now let's understand and now let's try to dig deeper into each of this, right? So basically event loop. So what is tick first thing? So on every event loop rotation, one event loop rotation is one tick. One event loop rotation, one tick. So now when I say set timeout of zero, right? Event loop has many phases in it. Event loop has many phases in it, out of which <coughs> timers phase and idle phase and polling phase and IO phase callback phase, close callback phase. So there are many phases, but I just I'm just uh, explaining you which are needed. Uh, but yes, these are the highly different phases. So what happens is inside the polling phase and IO phase set immediate is invoked. Okay. Set immediate was designed for mainly these two phases. Okay. We'll understand what is these two or for a moment, let's forget this also, right? For a, for a moment, let's forget this also, right? So timers phase, IO phase is the phase where you're reading or writing a file. Right? It means you are using a file system module over here and close callbacks is basically when you want to close. So uh, socket dot on. So on, on, on an event. So whenever you are listening an event, basically you, you will have close events. Uh, like when a connection is closed, what I have to do, gracious handling or any, any stuff like that. Right. So event loop has its own uh, phases, right. And each phase is kind of a tick in the uh, tick in our process, right? So first thing, process dot next tick is going to execute immediately after whatever uh, I mean after whatever are present in the callback queue immediately after it. So pro uh, all the callback functions or all the asynchronous functions in the event queue are after executing them immediately. Process dot next tick is going to work, right? So that's, that's how, that's the reason why process dot next tick is appearing first and then set timeout or set immediate without a normal IO operation. If you are using them, then they are non-deterministic. It means you cannot say what is going to be called first and what is going to be called next. But when you use them inside a file system module or inside the FS phase or IO phase, then always set immediate is going to be read first. So if I just uh, try to show you that constant fs is equal to require fs. I'm just trying to do something. Okay. Uh, read file. So here I'm giving the path. Uh, we'll see how to read files and everything later on. And here I'll get data. 
and if i do the same thing over here if i do the same thing over here right now see set immediate is always called first see set immediate is always called first so inside the file system or io operation if you schedule anything with the set immediate then even though set timeout is set for zero or it is called first or it is registered first it doesn't matter set immediate is given priority inside the io operations and set timeout is given lower priority in case of io phase but whereas if you are not defining the context of it in which phase you are going to use then uh, it is non deterministic and it totally depends on how your os is assigning the process and how the process module is going to execute your code right so process dot next tick is appearing immediately uh, after the current execution of the event queue set immediate is in the next so after current execution is done in the next cycle the set immediate is going to be executed okay so if i do this right so see process dot next tick is just think of it like this there is a bunch of operation happening every now and then one loop one loop one loop so when you are registering a process dot next tick in this loop as soon as this particular data is completed immediately process dot next tick is called it means it it stays that process dot next tick means that the current one is going to end and next one is going to start so at the end of current tick the next tick is called and then set immediate is called and then set timeout is called so this are the advanced uh, discussions over timers and i would say these are the four different or most confusing timers present in uh, node js where in set timeout returns a timer value which can be cleared later on if a condition is achieved and set immediate is again the same thing wherein you want to clear an interval after certain condition is achieved and set immediate and set timeout of zero are going to behave inconsistently when it is defined out of context but it is defined when they are defined inside a file system callback or fs module then set immediate is always going to be invoked first and set timeout is going to be invoked later similarly process dot next tick is called after the current execution of the event loop immediately and after process dot next tick set immediate is going to happen so these are the high level differences between all of these two all of these four and it's really good to understand and i would say these are the interviewers most famous questions um i mean i when you ask me because they are very much interested in knowing the phases and close callback and more about event loop right so this clearly explains that you have tried to understand node js a bit more 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 than any other person right so that's all about the programming with node js